Here we go again, looking into the dark side of Thomas the Tank toys. All this is a freak sideshow to my massive Thomas Tank collection. Apart from being illegal, these fake toys are also dangerous, as they have inferior construction and design. In no way can I endorse these knockoff toys. This video has images, lights and sounds, which may disturb some viewers. One item that I'll be showing is so horrendous and horrific, I will put an extra warning up before it is displayed. Some people may perceive this as an instructional video, so I better throw this title up as well, as boring as it is. Let's kick off with this small Thomas Train playset, which I picked up for five Australian dollars in a well-known market in the city where I live. As always, the packaging provides us with some visual entertainment, and often this packaging is far better presented than what's inside the box. This knockoff Thomas is powered with one AA battery. Overall, there's a very cheap and nasty feel to this tiny toy. Once this set is assembled, Thomas goes about his business with some speed. When looking at the decals on this toy, it gives us an indication of the desperation of the toy maker as he's attempting to align himself with licensed Thomas toys. Next up are two Tommy copy playsets. These have more elaborate layouts compared to what you saw in my first Dark Side video. I'll have to admit, some of these layouts do look very interesting. Each of these sets cost me $15. It's in fact a very inexpensive way to collect cloned blue track. The inclusion of double track sections and points makes this a very strange bonus. Don't be fooled by the innocent good looking charm of Thomas in these sets. He's lacking the high quality components, design and safety devices which are incorporated in licensed Thomas toys. In the end, all this Thomas will do is break your heart. One very peculiar aspect to these copy Tommy sets is the cloning of only Thomas's carriage Annie. I'm yet to find a Clarabelle in this series of copy products, so this really does set up a strange sort of conspiracy theory. Now let's ask the question, whatever happened to Clarabelle? Maybe you have the answer. It might be timely to look at a licensed Thomas product. This is a Thomas starter set, where I live at retails for around $20. Strangely, this set is the same price as a Thomas without the track and extra carriage you find here. This little starter set is a perfect introduction to the Trackmaster series of Thomas toys, and this product is certainly built to last. The next set is what I'm classing as visually disturbing. It's a real insight into the very dark and nasty side of copy products. This Thomas and Freight car set cost me $15. Possibly this is one of the most unusual knockoff Thomas sets that I've come across. The fact that Thomas is actually not represented in this set makes this set a standout. 
What you will see here will definitely establish a new low. Not only that, this set is dangerous due to its very low quality. The box artwork does not disappoint. There's some really strange things represented here. And again, this is an insight into those who create this rubbish. I'm pretty sure that this set will leave you with some very mixed emotions. Strangely, in this set comes two powered trains, and it looks like we get a very rough and ready version of Gordon and Spencer. Thomas is missing in action. Take a very good look at the finish on both of these trains. Maybe the only tick that I can give here is the faces do look fairly similar to the real characters, but hey, let's not go easy on this rubbish. I can assure you that this toy is extremely low quality. Each engine is powered with a AA battery, and take note of the size of the electric motor and the gearing of this toy. One aspect of this set is quite strange, the freight cars do seem to be very well detailed. And to me there seems to be a link to the Tommy designs, except for the couplings. Once I start to dig around and see the way that this stuff is assembled, I find it's very easy to pull apart, and these components that I've separated away could easily become choking hazards, a small child could easily be confused, thinking that this is actually a lolly. And this really does highlight how these copy products can be shown to be potential killers. These types of toys present a constant and ongoing problem for consumer agencies across the globe. And sometimes it's better off if I just say absolutely nothing. The next set is very interesting indeed, named Train Story Paradise, it's not that different to what you may class as a Christmas tree train set. This set was priced at $25, but my wife bargained it down to only $20. The real novelty in this set is the ability of Thomas to do puffing smoke, and I did find it quite interesting how this is achieved, and we'll have a detailed look at this process. The Thomas in this playset, I feel actually looks pretty good, and it's a very large scale but there's something not quite right with Thomas's face. I'm thinking that this Thomas has had a nose job, or possibly a Botox overdose. Maybe it's just those small sized black wheels, which are the distraction here. Let's do a bit of a tour of what's inside this very unusual copy Thomas. I think the first thing I noticed was there's a circuit board there and it's floating around right next to the gear in the motor there so it's only a matter of time before the two of them would meet and mingle. It's got traction tyres on the drive wheels. Up the front by a big dollop of hobnail glue there's two pieces of steel. I know it's steel because a magnet will stick to it. And also up the front is this device which is a little smoke box. It's got a bellows underneath, and there's a rod that comes through from the motor and pushes this bellows. There's an element inside, powered from the battery set. Uh, this reservoir here, I'm going to open it up and show you, but there's a reservoir of oil here and a wick. 
and it punches smoke up the chimney stack. It's actually not a bad idea. So let's have a look inside this little smoke box and I'll show you how it works. There's a reservoir that you can put oil in. There's this wick and it seems like it's cotton. It's very hard to tell. And there's an element there. It looks like an element from a, a light bulb to be honest. Now that I've got it on you can see there's the wick there and the element there and the wick sucks the oil up to the element. I'm just moving down to show you the bellows in action. Well there's a the smoke box, there's the hole that the air gets pumped up from the bellows and there's the element there, I don't know whether it's a little bit of tungsten or nichrome but I've got to try and work out what's on the cotton wool and I'm going to show you some different options. I'll be quite honest, this thing smells like it's had coconut oil in it. Uh, something with a low smoke point, but I'm going to try baby oil, because I know that makes smoke. I'm also going to try some smoke fluid. And I'm also going to try some glycerine uh, mixed with a little bit of water. I read about that on the internet. I should also inform you that none of these wads are super saturated. They've been dipped in the fluid and they've been squeezed and you can just see there's a bit of fluid that comes off them when, you, when I squeeze them, but they're not dripping wet. Okay, first up I'm going to try a little bit of baby oil. Let's see what it looks like. Smoking pretty good. Next will be smoke fluid, which is diethylene glycol and some water. Well, to me, it doesn't seem as effective as the baby oil. And last, and by no means least, is glycerin mixed with a little bit of water. And I read about this on a model railway forum. It said it's really good for making smoke out of model trains. Yes, those model train people were correct. Glycerin and a little bit of water makes for a great smoke fluid. The thing about this, Thomas, is it chews through the batteries to get a good smoke effect. I'm onto my fourth set of AA batteries. It takes four per load to bring up a good smoke effect. So now I'll take it over to the track and let's have a look at it running around. I think the other interesting thing about this train is its large scale. And there's a wooden Thomas that you're all going to know, you're going to know about wooden track. But to give you an idea of the gauge of the track, there's some Lego track. And it's a very, very similar gauge. Here's that warning I spoke of earlier. My very strong advice to you is if you hold Thomas close to your heart, you're best to look away now. What I'm about to show will shock many viewers. This is so, so wrong in so many ways. This has to be a Dark Side classic, and I challenge anyone to find a more distorted Thomas tank. I'm almost too scared to release him from his box prison. 
and this distorted Thomas cost me $12. Once we have a good look around him, it's difficult to know what to say. Possibly there's one word which sums this Thomas up, and that's the word wrong. Who knows, maybe this is a Halloween Thomas. It's difficult to understand the motivation for a toy company to produce a knockoff like this. But again, remember, we're dealing with people who are desperate and stoop to the lowest levels to attract a buyer. This transformable Thomas has one of those crazy wheels which gives him his random action. Possibly random is another great word to sum up what we see here. Well, in the shape of dark side to come, I will look carefully at these Tommy styled knockoff toys. I have a sneaky suspicion these are very close to the classic licensed toys we used to see years ago. And to finish off, let's do a little bit of special effects school. And if you lasted this long, I thank you for doing so. See ya. Just to explain to you how I've done the falling smoke. Um, when I was revealing this this beast, let me clear some smoke away. Just wafted away. So I've got um, an old set of uh, flannelette pajamas uh, there, and I've got the smoke machine plumbed into it. So if I pump a bit of smoke, I get that. And because the smoke gets cooled, the smoke drops away, and that's because the ice is in there and the flannelette is actually quite wet. Just clear it away again. And if I chase it around, the smoke comes in via this. It's just the garden irrigation plumbing. And there's my smoke machine, and I've got one of the plumbing parts there just gaffer taped onto the front of my Aldi smoke machine, which actually, they're pretty good, I have to admit. But it's always good to have a little bit of special effects school so uh, people can learn the little tricks that are done, which are usually always kept secret squirrel. It really is a very simple effect to, to set up. <laughs> 